This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This lecture is on Chapter 11 of the free lecture notes in Paper F2. Uh, and it's the first of several chapters looking at something called process costing. Uh, which is a slightly different approach to costing from the, um, the one we have, ones we had before, absorption marginal. Because there we were producing cost cards for one unit. I make desks, do a cost card, how much does one desk cost to make? Process costing takes a slightly different approach. And it relates to things like, think about cars. Car manufacturers are producing thousands and thousands of identical cars. Uh, but they do it we're going through several processes. Um, you know, you might have one process where they build the shape of the car. That's supposed to be a car. And once you've got the shape of the car, maybe it goes into another department, another process, where they put the wheels on. Ooh. And then once they've got the wheels on, the car moves along uh, to another process, and maybe in the next room, they paint the car. Now, I'm not going to go on and on. I mean, perhaps the car's then finished, even though we haven't put an engine in. But they have these production lines where uh, each room, each department is doing a different thing. And gradually, the car becomes more and more towards a finished car. And when you've got that sort of situation, lots of processes taking place, um, there's going, well, there are two things. One is you want to build up the cost of a finished car, obviously. Ultimately, we need to know how much the whole thing costs. Uh, but also, you're going to have inventories at each stage. You know, at the end of the month, you'll have some cars which have just had the body. You know, and they haven't gone any further. They're going to have the rest of the work done next month. Equally, you have some cars which have the body and have the wheels on. Uh, but they're not painted. That will happen next month. And so on. Uh, so it's very useful or needed uh, very often to be able to know the cost at each stage. How much does a car cost when you've only got the body? How much does a car cost when it's got its wheels on? Which will be a bit more, obviously. How much does the car, how much does it cost us once it's got its uh, paint on? Well, with process costing, uh, we can cost at each stage. So it's where you have a large volume of identical items like cars and where you have several processes. So that's what's going on. And the way we calculate the cost, well, this is the introduction, and you'll see it's so easy it's untrue, uh, but there are problems which I'll bring in in the next chapters. But just look at example one to give you the basic idea. During February, the following costs were incurred in a process. We spent 20,000 on materials, 10,000 on labour, 8,000 on overheads. Uh, we produced 2,000 units in that process. I say produced, they were finished in that process. Perhaps this is the process uh, where we uh, build the shape of the car. And 2,000 units were finished in that process. What's the cost per unit at that stage? Well, all we do is this. We add up the costs in the process. Uh, materials 20,000, labour 10,000, overheads 8,000. So the total costs uh, this month, 38,000. We say how many units did we produce this month? 2,000? And so so easy, we say, right, the cost per unit. If it's 38,000 for 2,000 units, 
it's $19 per unit. Couldn't be much easier. Uh, as I say, there can be problems, which is why we've got the later chapters. This is only an introduction. But whatever problems uh, crop up, this is always the basic idea. Uh, getting the total cost divided by the units, and there we are. Uh, over the page, you'll see process tier counts. Now, there's very little account, uh, tier count work in the uh, exam in paper F2. Uh, and it's slightly annoying because tier counts proper are in paper F3. But they can just ask you a little bit about it. They can't ask you to write up a full account. But they just can check that you know where things go. And so let me show you what the process account looks like. Example 2 says, prepare a process account for information in example 1. Well, again, because there's so little of this, and accounts really is paper F3, I'm not going to go through a full lecture on debits and credits. Uh, but just for this bit, to be safe, learn the rules. But we use a little account to keep a record of all the costs. And you will see, particularly in the later chapters, it's very useful to keep a record of the units as well as the dollars. Uh, and what we do, every time we've got any costs in the process, we record them in this process on the left-hand side, which if you've ever done any debits and credits, you'll know is the debit side. Uh, and so we list all the costs. Here we had materials, 20,000, labour, 10,000. Uh, overheads, 8,000. And we keep a check on the units as well. Uh, the units, we always assume the units go with the materials. So as soon as we spend the money on the materials, it's when we start working on 2,000 units. So all the costs go on that side. And of course, there's 2,000 units. We've spent a total of 38,000. We then do our costing. We've done it and we see, ah, each unit leaving this process costs $19. And so on the other side, on the credit side, we say, ah, how many units go out? The output, 2,000 units. And how are they going to be valued? Well, $19 a unit from our costings, 38000 And there we are. And those 2000 that go out, they'll either go to the next process, there's 2,000 units worth 38000 and then we'll do more work, you'll see in later chapters. Or maybe they've now completely finished, in which case, those 2,000 would go to a finished goods page. So there we are, but appreciate this was only meant as a little introductory area. You'll see on the last page, there are three problem areas which you could have to deal with, and I'll deal with each of them in the three following chapters. Uh, but losses, Although we, in this case we're working on 2,000 units, maybe something went wrong and a hundred of them either disappeared or were damaged and had to be thrown away. Well, it causes us a problem. We'll deal with that in the next chapter. Another one is work in progress. Here we were working on 2,000 units. But suppose I told you 1,900 of them were completely finished. But the other hundred were only part finished. Well, if they're only part finished, it would be um, unfair to value them at the full cost of 19. 
if they're only part finished, we'll only value them at part cost. But it does mean extra work, as again, you'll see in a later chapter. Uh, and thirdly, joint products. Um, you can have a situation where you're producing several products in the same process. Well, again, it creates extra work. So this was just a, uh, a little introduction. That's the basic idea. Uh, but you will see in the later chapters how we can make it a little bit more demanding. <laughs>